Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Human Resource Management. This is Chapter 5 and we are on selection. All part of the, the big uh, schema thing, the big process of, of onboarding an individual to your company. You have to recruit, uh, you have to select, you have to hire, you have to train, you have to do all of these things. But this chapter, Chapter 5, we are focusing on selection. Our learning objective for the first part is to be able to name and discuss the steps in the selection process. It's not just selection. There are various steps within and throughout the process that you need to adhere to if you want to complete a successful selection process. So the selection process in itself, uh, the steps involved in choosing people who have the right qualifications, keyword, highlight it, underline it, uh, to fill a current or future job opening. They have to have uh, the appropriate uh, qualifications. Uh, if they don't, you shouldn't settle for second best, third best, fourth best, fifth, fifth best. Look for and find what you need. If you don't get uh, the individual that you need, uh, you will find yourself looking for another individual that you need uh, within two years. So, so always work to get the right person the first time. We'll talk about the role of uh, uh, human resources. So you want to, they want to uh, define the actual process. So you have to say, okay, this is what the process is, and it varies from organization to organization. But you have to actually define what the process is, and then you want to guide the process step by step. Uh, if the person is the lead recruiter, they would kind of be uh, the the lead for the project in terms of of recruiting and selecting someone. And they would say, okay, we're going. This is how we're going to go about recruiting. This is how we're going to go about selecting. This is how we're going to go about uh, bringing this person on board and what we're going to offer them. So you want to define what the process is, then guide uh, your counterparts throughout the business through the process. The cost of the selection process, it's quite co costly as you can see. Uh, statistics vary, but uh, the U.S. Department of Labor says it's $40,000 because you have to think about it. You have all these people that spend their time and energy and resources to interview people. You have recruiters that that's their main job. Their salary is devoted to uh, recruiting and selecting people. And then you have uh, upper management who, who a lot of times, especially with the higher positions, you want them to be there. You want them to interview individuals, and uh, you know it takes their uh, their time away from from handling other value added uh, activities. So uh, it it does end up being quite costly, and people don't know how those costs uh, kind of get calculated. But if you think about it, you know as they say, time is money. You're taking away the time from all these individuals that are interviewing, researching, doing background checks, and things of that nature. And the cost includes time and money spent, of course. Like I said, time is money, and uh, money is money as well. So continue with the selection process. The so five steps of the selection process. Criteria development. So you need to figure out what your criteria is. So if you have the selection process, and there are five steps in the selection process, uh, you have to make sure that you take it step by step. Uh, the criteria development, you must take your time to develop the appropriate and correct criteria. If you don't have the correct criteria, then you definitely won't get the right individual. Uh, application and resume review, so uh, you have to go over the application that they complete. You have to go over the resume that they complete. Ensure that everything is correct. Uh, ensure that there are no lies on there. Uh, I've run into a lot of situations and scenarios where there have been uh, things that are not true on the application as well as the resume. Uh, interviewing, have to go through the interview. We're going to talk about the different types of interviews uh, that you can uh, have for these individuals, uh, but everyone needs to go through the interview process. Uh, test administration, uh, if they take uh, like the Wonderlick test, and then uh, making the offer. Uh, you know, you, you, you Sometimes people make the assumption that people are going to accept an offer, but uh, but there may be other things at play uh, in terms of accepting an offer. Uh, maybe it's not enough money. Uh, maybe uh, they have some other prior obligation. Maybe the company that they're currently working at um, uh, comes back and has a counter offer. There could be a, a variety of different things that come into play. A few more learning objectives. Uh, be able to explain why criteria development is an important part of the selection process. I uh, touched on that a little bit just now. Uh, give examples of types of criteria that can be developed. Uh, describe the advantages and disadvantages of internal and external candidates. Uh, and there, there are uh, 
you know, there's a, 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 a there's the thought process to internal and there's a thought process uh, on the external candidate side. They're good and bad about uh, both. It just depends on the situation, depends on the scenario. Uh, so criteria development and resume review. So criteria for hiring, uh, part of a job analysis. So you do the job analysis first. You figure out what does that job actually entail. And you don't do an analysis on the person. You do analysis on the job. That's why they call it a job analysis, not an employee analysis. Uh, may include other necessary skills. You find out what those skills are. You put them in the job analysis. Uh, then you create that job description from the information that you have. And voila, you have the you know the criteria that you need uh, in order to find the correct individual uh, development of interview questions uh, so some some companies have a canned uh, interview template that has the same questions over and over again I've done a lot of interviews in my day so I've kind of uh, learned to um, I guess uh, feel my way through an interview. Now I do have uh, predetermined questions, but uh, depending upon how the interview goes, maybe it, it, it veers right and I have some different questions. Maybe it veers left and I don't have uh, those those questions and I go a different direction. Uh, it just depends, but I've, you know, I've, I've done a lot of interviews in my career. Uh, some more on criteria development and resume review. So example of criteria might include, so this is a sample, uh, two years of experience managing a $2 million or more project budget, a bachelor degree in business or closely related field, ability to work on multiple products projects at once, uh, problem solving ability, conflict management ability, very important, uh, ability to manage a team of five to six diverse workers, and it's good to get really specific in terms of how many people they're going to be managing, score of at least a 70 on a cognitive ability test, and score of excellent from most recent employer. A lot of times companies will ask for uh, your review from, uh, from your prior employers uh, to see what people really uh, do think about you because uh, they could say, hey, you know, I, I could say, oh, they, they love me at ABC Company, but if they talk to ABC Company, then they would say, or if they saw my review, they would not feel that way because they really hated me. Uh, validity, so how useful the tool to measure a person's attributes, right? So how useful is the tool? So I, I talked about the Wonderlic test. Is it a, a useful tool, tool in uh, measuring a person's attributes? And I'm going to say yes. Uh, from the experience that I've had, uh, you know, it's a very useful uh, tool. Uh, you look at things like the Myers-Briggs test. Uh, a lot of these different tests that test our personality, test uh, all kind of capabilities that we have. Uh, I would say that the, you know a lot of the top ones are, are actually pretty accurate. Now I'm not saying live or die by it, but I'm saying that they do uh, you know provide accurate results as far as my experience. And then uh, reliability, the degree to which other selection techniques yield similar data over time. All right, so if it's a time-tested test and it's proven to to say that if ABC selects this on the test then they're going to be a good employee and if ABC selects this then they're probably not going to be a great employee you probably shouldn't hire them uh, if you hire those that conflicts with the test and they don't do well and you hire those that agree with the test and they do uh, well then then you see um, you know some commonality in regards to the test uh, fit issues, and this is a big deal. Uh, looking for specific education and expertise, also looking for a fit within the company culture, right? If the company culture is very loose, and uh, you know it's a very young, hip environment, and then I come in with a three-piece suit and a bow tie, uh, right? And my suspenders then maybe they look at me and say, you know, I don't think this guy is going to be a fit uh, with the company. Uh, we like to have uh, spontaneous dance parties. And I'm not making that up. There actually is a company that I was looking at that actually has spontaneous dance parties. So there are all kind of different things there to, to see if somebody uh, is a fit. Now, not to say that somebody in a three-piece suit and a bow tie and suspenders cannot uh, be the most fun person ever. You just never know. But people do have preconceived notions in terms of the way that, that people dress, whether it be good or bad. Uh, then reviewing resumes, so you have some type of rating system, uh, and, and just remember, you guys, uh, and we'll talk about this later in the in the course. Uh, you have to know and understand that people are looking at your your resume with the magnifying glass, and they're not looking for you know, oh, this person, this is great, they were in the Glee Club. No, they're looking for things to disqualify you. They're looking, oh, oh you know what, this person has a typo. I'm going to go ahead and put this one uh, in the trash because they have a typo. Uh, not going to go with them. They're looking for reason to kind of you know. Uh, disqualify you out of the out of the running so so don't give them a reason uh, to kick you out of the race let you know get yourself in front of them and put your best foot forward 
uh, internal external candidates right so advantages and disadvantages so this is you know up to your um, your beliefs uh, but I'll give you a you know a very impartial view uh, advantage to internal candidate is that uh, you're moving people up throughout the organization other people see them move up throughout the organization and they say I can do the same thing and it helps with retention overall now if I bring an external candidate in for that same position uh, it, it's probably gonna take a little bit more time for people to warm up to that individual uh, but on the positive side for external candidates it's likely that that individual uh, is a very solid quality uh, candidate. Uh, so you have to make sure that that you know you you sit down and carefully examine what you need and then go about it. The last two jobs I've had, the the companies they've been looking specifically for external candidates. They weren't looking for an internal candidate, and it could be for a variety of of reasons. You know, I know the reason because I sit down and interview. Uh, with the people who are you know interviewing me to see if I'm they're gonna bring me aboard to the company and they t they give me reasons and tell me why uh, they want an external candidate uh, but you know they're 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 you know two sides of the coin on this one uh, so sometime internal is better sometime external is better advantages and disadvantages uh, to both uh, so more learning objectives so explain the various types of interviews and interview questions discuss interview method methods and potential mistakes in interviewing candidates and there are a lot of those and explain the interview process so these are different types of interviews you have traditional uh, we sit face to face uh, I got your resume I'm circling I'm pulling my glasses down and I'm asking you questions you have a telephone interview a lot of times uh, you'll start with the telephone interview most specifically with the recruiter a panel interview where it's one two three four five six people and they're asking you questions a lot of times that can be also called a stress interview because they want to see how you do under pressure I've been in those before uh, I feel like I've performed well in them uh, information interview meal interview hey we're just gonna go out to dinner and we're gonna chop it up and see uh, you know how you do in this setting uh, group interview right so sort of similar to a, to a panel interview but uh, could be different type of feel like I know some managers bring in their whole team to interview an individual and see if they like that person uh, me personally um, I, I don't uh, really do that uh, because you have to it, it depends on your team if your team has those capabilities uh, to be appropriate in the interview then yeah you know you could bring them in but if they don't then that's probably not something that, that you should do and as a manager you know you have to use your common sense and make that decision a video video interview if you want to interview over Skype or something like that get a good feel over the persons and uh, you know kind of observe the person's nonverbal cues and then uh, non-directive interview so I like to you know kind of like I said go off the script and 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 create my own things and flow with the way that, that the interview goes so interview questions it'll be a video uh, in the supplemental video section uh, for uh, for these so situational interview style so I'm gonna give you a specific situation how would you handle it and it's good if you have if you have experience a lot of times any question that they ask you you're gonna have some type of scenario that matches that and I've always been able to answer my interview questions appropriately because of the amount of experience that I've had uh, behavior description uh, interview style right so now you're just asking about in theory you know you are you this are you that in theory uh, but situational you were given specifics and and if you give some great specifics and you kind of nail that when they ask you that situational question you will definitely uh, win some fans and possibly get you a job uh, so interviewing interviewing questions to avoid national origin like oh what 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 origin are you uh, you know are you African American are you mixed are you that that is a negative that will get you sued uh, age can't ask that uh, one way uh, that people uh, try and determine what age you are because they look in at you, you know what year they got graduated from college things like that so um, and, and the amount of experience that you have so you have to know and understand like I have a friend and he gave me a resume it's like five pages long I said buddy you can't have a resume that's five pages long uh, they're gonna know and understand like how old you are you're gonna have to chop some of this off and just put the last uh, three or four jobs that you've had on there I can't talk about marital status like I said I've had a, I had an individual I was in, interviewing with it was a panel interview me two other managers and uh, one of the managers she had to leave and go um, to a, another appointment 
me and this guy, another male, were sitting there, and he asked the young lady, "Did she have a significant other?" You just and he was talking about the our environment, and it was like a you know family fun environment. We do a lot of things, but that's absolutely the wrong question to ask, especially since we weren't going to hire her. And I had to excuse myself because that was you know I, I knew that was going down the wrong path. Uh, can't ask about religion, disabilities, criminal record, and personal questions right uh in that same interview i found it interesting the lady she you know has some weird tactics as well so she found out who you know that the three of us were interviewing her and she looked all three of us up on facebook she found the one guy and uh uh you know uh became facebook friends with this guy and and then they started corresponding back and forth before the interview which is very very strange very weird uh, for her to do and also very weird for him to uh correspond back um, but I believe that was, you know, like his first round of interviews. So, uh, you know, I understand sometimes, you know, if you if you don't have any guidance, then you may make those type of mistakes. Uh, interview bias. So halo or reverse halo effect bias. So let's just say you do. We talk about one thing, and uh, you do this one thing great, and I see it on your resume. So now. You're talking to me about all your negatives, and I don't even hear them. They're all just going by. I don't even care. I'm like, whoo, I see a halo around your head, and I love you because, you know, you do this one thing right, and nobody else can get it right. Uh, and it could be the reverse. You do this one thing bad, now I don't hear any of the good stuff that you're doing. Uh, contrast bias, so uh, you, uh, you may be uh, always having a bias by comparing that person to someone else. Let's say somebody left the company. And you're interviewing, you're like, oh, you're not like Johnny, you're not like this, and you're not like that. And I've been in a scenario like that when I went into not my current job, but the job before that. They were like, well, you have some very big shoes to fill, uh, talking about the prior manager. And, uh, you know, they, so they kept kind of comparing me to her. A uh, gut feeling bias, so, you know, you know, I feel good about you, I'm going to hire you. Or, you know what, I don't have a good feeling about you. Uh, you know, you look like my cousin, my cousin was shady. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hire you. Right. So you have to, you know, people have these gut feeling biases as well. Uh, generalization bias, right? So some of you say, Hey, you know what, however you act in that interview is how you're going to act in the office. Sometimes people are just nervous and, and it helps as a manager to sometimes calm their nerves and not add to it and put so much pressure on them that, the, that they're going to break. Everybody's not the best under pressure. Uh, cultural noise, uh, bias, um, you know, uh, people may think that uh, certain things are, are, are going on and they hear the noise and they say, meaning from the interviewee side, I say, I think that the interviewer wants to hear this question answered this way. So that's how I answer it. That's the noise going on. And then uh, maybe it's not the right answer. And maybe it's just me answering like that because he wants me to answer like that. Or I think he wants me to answer like that. Nonverbal behavior bias, so you see me doing certain things, maybe catch me picking my nose, something like that, right? Uh, yeah, I'll probably get you kicked out of the interview or not, not get a job. But uh, nonverbal uh, behavior bias, you see certain things that people do, maybe they have a nervous twitch, maybe they scratch their neck or something like that. You don't like that and say, ah, you know, I'm not going to go with that person. Uh, similar to me bias, right? So uh, let's just say, you know, uh, you, somebody comes in, you start talking to interviewer ABC, and he says, oh, I love the Lakers. You say, I love the Lakers, too. He's just like me. Next guy comes in, he says, oh, you were just talking. He says, oh, I love the Clippers. I'm like, no, I love the Lakers. You're not like me. I'm going to get the other guy because he's similar to me. All right. Uh, and recency bias, that just means like, hey, the last person to come in is the last person you're going to remember, and it's probably the last person that you're going to hire because – uh, that's the last person that put an imprint in your brain. And it shouldn't be that way, uh, but sometimes with some people it is. Their, their memory span is not that great. So interviewing the process. Uh, you want to go ahead and recruit new candidates, establish criteria for which the candidates will be rated, <clears throat> develop interview questions based on the analysis, right, because they vary and they're different for different positions, set a timeline for interviewing and decision-making, right, has to be a strict timeline this is how we're going to do the interview this is when we're going to make a decision this is when we're going to get this person on board uh, connect schedules with others involved in the interview process set up the interviews with candidates and set up any testing procedures right and that's up to the recruiter interview the candidates and perform any necessary testing 
uh, once all results are back, meet with the hiring team. So the hiring committee get together, uh, discuss each candidate, and make a decision based on uh, established criteria. So it's just like America's top model. You're holding up the picture. We're looking at what do you think about this person? Oh, yeah, she didn't work down the, the runway right. Uh, so we're going to make our decision uh, in terms of that pool of information. And then put together an offer uh, for the candidate. And does it end there? Absolutely not. Because uh, even if you offer uh, me a job, then we have to negotiate uh, back and forth. And then you have to do background checks and all kinds of different things so it's never so easy peasy uh, learning objectives uh, explain the types of tests that can be administered as a part of the selection process and be able to discuss the types of selection uh, models <clears throat> So testing and selecting, you have cognitive ability tests. Anytime you see cognitive, that's uh, your brain. Uh, you know, can you put these building blocks together, things like that. Uh, and not physically put them together, but put them together in, on the test and pen and paper. Personality tests, we want to see how your personality is. Uh, sometimes those are very tricky. People answer, they, they fall to that cultural noise, and they answer how they think they want them to answer. But you should just clear your mind and answer what you think is most appropriate. Physical ability tests, like I said before, I worked in a warehouse and uh, some people, you know, should have had a physical ability test to see, hey, can this guy stack these boxes on this pallet because the boxes are pretty heavy and uh, he may not be strong enough to do so. A uh, job knowledge test, uh, especially if you're an internal candidate, let me test you and quiz you on your job knowledge and then a work sample like a vestibule training. We're going to give you a sample, uh, you know, can you, can you uh, figure this out? Like what if I came in an interview and you came in an interview for a company, I was like, hey, how you doing? Shake your hand. And I set a Rubik's Cube down and said, figure it out, right? You got 15 minutes. Would, that, would you start sweating? Would that be a lot of pressure? If you figure it out, then you're going to get the job. Uh, so, you know, um, and what if the job is just putting together, you know, figuring out Rubik's Cubes and, and making new ones or something like that. Uh, so, you know, always interesting. Not that I, you know, have ever done that before, but maybe I will in the future. Uh, <clears throat> so again with testing and selecting selecting methods so you have clinical selection approach just normal uh, statistical we're going off number uh, based system to see well this person you know uh, scored in this quartile percentage quartile and this person scored a little bit lower I'm going with them uh, multiple cutoff model and a multiple hurdle model so sometimes uh, we have models that we set up to say, you know what, you have to hit this minimum criteria in each of these different areas. If you don't, then you're out. Then we can also have a multiple hurdle model where you say, okay, you got passed to the second round, then there was 10 people in the first round, three people got to the second round, then only two people into the third round. All right, so uh, different hurdles that they have to pass, uh, but everybody obviously is not going to pass all of those hurdles. And then you want to uh, learn at last learning objective. You want to explain the steps in making the offer uh, to the candidate. Uh, so once the candidate is chosen, uh, making the offer is also is all uh, important last step. Uh, ask questions ahead of time so fewer uh, issues. Uh, so you have fewer little issues later on. Uh, so if you ask these qualifying questions early, then you know what you're up against. Uh, if I were to make you an offer today, could you accept it? All right. So if you ask that type of offer or ask that type of question, you get a lot of individuals not make it fun, but you you know, and I've had this before. A guy will be like, hey, you know what? I need to talk to my spouse. You know, I need to talk with her, uh, and, and then I'll, I'll be able to tell you uh, tomorrow because you know people want to be involved in decisions or whatever. Uh, dollar wise, at what point would you accept or reject the offer? So I know going in, I know, hey, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking sixty-five thousand. I'm like, okay. Right. So if I come back with sixty five thousand, there shouldn't be any hiccups. Right. And if you tell me that you have to talk to your wife ahead of time, then that's great. Then I know Then maybe I say, hey, you know, we'll offer it to him today. He's going to go home, talk to his wife and he'll let us know in the morning. Offer letters should include a job title, salary, uh, other compensations such as uh, bonuses and stock options, benefits such as health care coverage, a 401k, vacation time, uh, paid holidays, start date, non-compete agreement expectations, and additional considerations such as relocation expenses. All these things should be included, uh, should be very inclusive. Uh, if you get a job offer, you know, while you're doing this class, take it, look at it in comparison to this, does it have everything on there? Uh, one time uh, I got a promotion and they reduced my pay. So if I hadn't checked out the paperwork, um, you know, there would have been a serious problem on, on my first paycheck. But I did look at it and I said, no, this this obviously uh, isn't right. So uh, make the offer. Hopefully you onboard a great uh, employee and they're there for years to come. So that's the end of chapter five. I'll see you next uh, at chapter six. Hopefully everything is going well. Uh, and uh, as always, have a good day and a great week.